Well, hey guys, this is Dr. Bailey from Trayminder. I'm a practicing orthodontist as well as the co-founder of Trayminder. In today's video, I'm going to answer some of the most commonly asked questions that I get either from the YouTube channel comment section or from Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. So let's get started. Most of these questions actually fall within a few common topic areas. And so I thought maybe this might be helpful for those of you who aren't following the comment sections or the Instagram stories. So the first question is, can I switch from 14 days to seven days? So basically the switch schedule is, um, is basically dependent on the activity of your osteoblast cells. Your osteoblast cells are your bone building cells. After the three or four days that it takes for the osteoclast, the bone breakdown cells to break down the bone to allow your teeth to move into place, then the osteoblast, the bone building cells, need time to deposit the bone on the tension side or the side from which the tooth has moved away from. So younger patients typically have more robust osteoblast cells. It takes them a little less time to build that bone versus those of us who are a little bit wiser, our osteoblast cells are a little bit slower. And that's usually the case, but not always. And so your orthodontist will know your particular um, your particular case, how difficult your the movements are, and they know the specifics of your of your treatment. So they're the best person to advise you on your wear schedule. Okay, the second question is my rubber bands keep slipping off my elastic button glued to my molar. Uh, so if it keeps slipping off, it's usually one of few reasons. One is that the rubber band thickness might be a little bit too thick. So your orthodontist may have a thinner rubber band. Sometimes uh, precision cuts, uh, those are the cutouts in your aligners. They are not as secure as having a molar button. So those might be options for you. So talk to your orthodontist about switching to something a little bit different. The next question is, is there a difference if my elastic button are on the first molar versus the second molar? Um, so basically both molars on the bottom are used for class two corrections. And the further back you go, the more the rubber band stretches and so the higher the force. And uh, going further back will give you more of a, a class two correction. Going more forward will be will give you a class two correction as well as some extrusion of the molars, which means that uh, it's a, it has a bite opening effect. So next question is, are latex or non-latex elastics better? Uh, based on the research, uh, latex rubber bands tend to be better than non-latex because they hold the force a little bit longer. Um, it doesn't make a huge difference as long as you switch out your rubber bands. So just be sure to throw away your rubber bands if you are using latex or non-latex and replace it with uh, some new ones because rubber bands, they do degrade with time. The next question is, I drink a lot of tea with no sugar. Do I have to brush after every cup? Uh, so teas contain a lot of tannins, which can stain your teeth as well as your clear liners. So it is good to at least get into the habit of rinsing your mouth with water before replacing your clear liners. Um, and this one I've been getting a lot of questions on. I'm grinding my teeth more with clear aligners. Is this normal? Uh, so based on some of the research I've read, it is pretty common for patients to increase their amount of grinding and clenching at night while wearing clear aligners. Um, but usually uh, if you help people with healthy TMJs, they usually 
will adapt very well. It's kind of a transient thing. A lot of patients during the day when they feel that two extra layer of aligners on, they just think they, they clench. And I would just advise that you try to not do that because when you clench with your aligners on, you're essentially uh, intruding your molars. And when you intrude your molars, after you take out your clear aligners, you'll notice sort of like a transient posterior open bite, which means that when you bite down, your molars or your back teeth aren't really hitting. And, um, and that's something that a lot of patients complain about. The only exception is that if you started with an anterior open bite, that's actually helpful for your case. It helps to close your bite. Wow, clear aligners hurt. Is there anything I can do? So, um, yes, clear aligners do hurt. It's uh, clear aligners are moving your teeth. There's a lot of bone remodeling going on. So it is normal. Uh, typically, I would advise using uh, acetaminophen in, in the US. That's uh, the brand name is Tylenol. Tylenol is is a good option for pain relief if you are not allergic to it because it does not inhibit the work of the osteoclast cells which are the bone breaking cells that helps to um, move your teeth um so and also some patients find that if they use uh, chewies, which are doing those chewing exercises, they help to relieve the pain. The next question is, will teeth demineralize if you brush right after eating acidic foods? So the short answer is yes. If you do drink orange juice or drink lemonade, things like that, it is actually better to withhold brushing your teeth for at least 30 minutes because the idea is that acidic foods, they kind of weaken your enamel and if you brush right after that, your enamel is softer and that can basically uh, scratch your enamel or remove little, very, very small amounts of the softened enamel. So it's best to wait 30 minutes after eating or drinking acidic foods to let the saliva, your natural saliva, to remineralize the uh, the enamel surface before brushing. Uh, you can also use uh, so rinse with some baking soda because baking soda is basic and it helps to neutralize the acids. Okay, and the next question says, a few of my attachments broke and the ortho office is closed. So generally, broken attachments are not a true orthodontic emergency. And what I would tell patients to do is to call the ortho office and just let them know and they will either appoint you right away to come in to get them repaired or they would add extra time to your next appointment so that they can repair it at that particular time. I guess the importance of repairing it quickly or being able to wait until later depends on a few factors. Number one is whether the attachment is on a critical tooth. A critical tooth is a tooth that uh, requires a lot of complex movements and having attachments thereby is important for its uh, smooth movement into a desired position. Uh, critical tooth sometimes is the lateral incisors, which are notorious for not tracking. Um, but if you are really close to the end of your treatment then and your tooth is already in a good position, it's tracking well, then it may not be necessary to replace that uh, attachment. Um, okay, let's see. The next question is, does the orthodontist or the Invisalign technician decide if refinements are needed or approved? So the short answer is it's always the doctor that decides. The technician just helps the doctor to move the teeth in the position that uh, the doctor wants the teeth to be in, um, but it's the doctor that makes that decision. However, just be aware of the fact that each office has different policies in terms of refinements. Um, generally, in my practice, comprehensive orthodontic treatment uh, does it uh, does include refinements because um, if certain teeth are not moving, they or, or they haven't moved into that final position I want them to be in, 
I will usually do a refinement to allow that to happen. Okay, the next question is, my teeth don't feel sore with clear aligners after three to four days. Can I switch to the new set to go faster? So this goes back to that previous question. Um, so your teeth, they don't feel sore after three to four days because your, your teeth have already moved into the, the, the position that your aligners want them to be in. Uh, the next few days is time needed for your osteoblast cells to rebuild the bone that, it, that is on the tension side so that your teeth uh, don't become too mobile. If you keep switching your aligners too quickly, you don't give your osteoblast a chance to build back the bone on the back side, and that can lead to a lot of mobility, and uh, that's not a good situation to be in. So please follow the advice and the switch schedule of your orthodontist. Okay, this next question says, the slits on my aligners used to attach elastic bands make my gum and the inside of my mouth bleed. What can I do? Uh, so those slits are called precision cuts. If you have Invisalign, they allow the attachment of elastics. So what you can do is just take your aligners out and physically bend the slits inward towards your teeth um, and you can use a nail file or emery board to smooth out any rough uh, edges also some orthodontic wax might be helpful at the beginning to allow your teeth and gums to acclimate to this new clear liner situation you're in okay uh, this next question is similar to the previous question the silver color hook Glued to my back lower molar is constantly rubbing against the inside of my cheek. I have a blister that hurts when I eat, drink, and even speak. Uh, so for, for this one, get some orthodontic wax and be sure to dry that area. Warm up, take a little piece, warm, warm the wax up uh, with the palms of your hands and uh, just go ahead and, and firmly wrap it around the hook. And that should help. Okay, the next question has to do with midlines. Can clear aligners correct midline discrepancies in adults? Uh, the answer is that it depends on the amount of discrepancy that you have. And usually a combination of wearing rubber bands, some IPR can help to correct those mild discrepancies. However, if you have a huge midline discrepancy as a result of uh, missing teeth or if your jaw is deviated to one side or the other side uh, just IPR or rubber bands alone may not be enough to to correct that and I have a video on midlines that you can watch for further details um, okay the next question is do all excess over jets require correction and so I'll start by saying that the ideal over jet, which is the, the millimeter difference between the top front teeth and the bottom front teeth, that amount is usually one to three millimeters. Um, however, that, that ideal, ideal over jet is not always the goal and it may not always be attainable for every single patient. And that's usually because not all of us have um, harmoniously uh, positioned upper and lower jaws. Some of us have, you know, smaller lower jaws or bigger lower jaws and vice versa. And so that makes it so that that ideal over jet of one, two, three may not always be possible. Um, some people have missing teeth and that affects that affects how your overjet will be. Um, and if you have very severe overjets, then sometimes orthodontic camouflage via extraction of teeth or jaw surgery may be needed. So a thorough exam with an orthodontist will be the thing that needs to happen so that you come up with a treatment plan that supports your goals and um, supports the long-term stability of your teeth.
Okay. Why are retainers or why is stabilization needed after active tooth movement? So uh, when, when you are done with your orthodontic treatment, your bone, the osteoblast and osteoclast cells are still uh, working to remodel the bone and uh, it takes about four months for your PDL or periodontal ligament tissues to sort of remodel and so usually I tell patients that it takes about four to six months uh, of full-time retainer wear after active treatment to help to stabilize and then uh, indefinite retainer wear for a lifetime. Next question is can I use my last aligner as my retainer? Uh, yes, you can, and I actually do advise my patients to actually save the last three of their aligners as backup retainers because when our teeth shifts back or relapse, they relapse um, sort of backwards. So it's always a good idea to save the last three sets of your old aligners as backup retainers. Just know that uh, the, the material of the aligners, they're a little bit different. Uh, the Essex or Trutane retainers, they are a little stiffer and a little bit thicker. So just keep that in mind.